Okay, so this is the video to go with question 1 to 9 on the non-calculator unit 1 paper, November 2017, that you guys sat as the mock in December. Starting with question 1. So in question 1, we've got a five-part question. They're all quite short. You've got to try and make sure you get all the questions right in the first nine questions. So have a look at these questions as examples and see if you can make sure that you've got these topics nailed. Starting off with 3 to the power of 4. 3 to the power of 4 simply means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. The power of 4 is telling that there's 4 of them multiplying each other. And that is being multiplied by 10 times 10 times 10, 10 to the power of 3 being 3 tens multiplying each other. 3 times 3 is with 9, 9 times 3 is with 27, 27 times our last 3 makes 81, 10 tens are 100, and then that 100 multiplied by another 10 would make a 1,000. And then 81 multiplied by a 1,000 will be 81,000. The power, remember, is telling me how many of them to multiply together. Question B, when you're dividing by a decimal, Sometimes it's easier to see those decimals as whole numbers. So if you wanted to, you could multiply top and bottom of this by 10. That would give you 10 on the top divided by 5. Then if I said to you how many 5s are in 10, you'd say 2. Otherwise, if you're going to deal with this as a decimal number, I'd rather think of it as being worth a half. And if I said... What is 1 shared into halves? How many 0.5s are there in 1? What is 1 shared into groups of 0.5? You'd still have the same answer of 2. Question C. The only way to do this is to actually draw it as a column subtraction. So adding that zero on the top. The reason I added that zero on the top is so that I have two digits in both of my numbers. Then when I come to do a subtraction, I'm going to need to borrow. That will become five. Ten take away the two gives me eight. 5 take away 8, won't work, borrow, 15 take away 8, 4 take away 3. You'll notice I lined up the decimal points, didn't have to think about it, just put them all in one column like the buttons on a snowman's coat. Question D, to be able to add or subtract fractions, the denominators... must be the same number and we do this by multiplying either one or both fractions so they have the same denominator the denominators must be the same now as it is if i multiply that second fraction top and bottom by two i will end up with a pair of fractions both with a six for a denominator. Sometimes you have to multiply both fractions, but in this case, just doubling that second fraction gives me a fraction with a 6 on the denominator, and I can now work out my answer. 5 6 take away 4 6 leaves me with 1 6, because we really only do the 5 take away the 4. Question E. Right, in this question, we actually only do the 2 multiplied by the 3. 
We know that gives an answer of 6, so there's a 6 in my final answer. But then I start counting how many decimal places are in the numbers in the multiplication question, and there are two. So I need to have two decimal places in my answer. 6 wouldn't have any, 0 0.6 would have only have had one, so 0 0.06 is my two decimal place answer. Question two is a true or false question. Now the papers that I've marked, the ones that get the best answers for these, are the ones that use this space underneath to actually do some workings out, so that you can have a go and to see if the actual statements in the top can be proved by you to be true or false. Okay, so starting with question uh, one from the table. The expression g times g times g can be written as 3g. Well, this is false because g times g times g would be written as g to the power of 3 and g plus g plus g would be written as 3g and they're not the same. So, in number 1, here's my thinking. Then in question 2, the expression 7y take away y can be written as 7. Well, that's actually, if you think about it, 7y's take away 1y. 7y's take away 1y would have to give you 6y. So that's also false, because that's not going to leave you with 7. Question 3, getting a bit more complicated. And um, we have a divided by 4 divided by a. <coughs> so let's have a look at that one. a divided by 4 divided by a. Is a fraction being divided by another part. A fraction is four a div being divided by four, then it's being divided by a as well. So this can be rewritten as a over four a. That divider and that divider can go together to give you one divider on the denominator. So if that's the case. I can say a goes into a once and into a once and have no a's left and just have a quarter. But that seems a little bit complicated, so I'm going to try it with a number. And if I decide that my number is 2, <coughs> pardon me, and if I decide my number is 2 and I do 2 over 4, divided by 2. If this theory is correct, I should end up with a quarter. So 2 divided by 4 divided by 2. I think that's the 2, the same as 2 divided by 4 times 2, which is 2 over 8. And yeah, that's going to give me the same as a quarter. So I've done it with algebra, and then I double checked it with some numbers. That one's actually true. Question 4. A divided by 2 is the same as half A. So in question 4, A divided by 2 is a half A. A divided by 2 is another half A. If I put two halves together, I do go back to a whole A. So that makes perfect sense. And then in question 5, the last one, when a equals 1, and b equals 2, and c equals 3, a plus b plus c would be the same as 1 plus 2 plus 3, which makes 6. a, b, c means a times b times c, 1 times 2 times 3, which equals 6. Up here in the question, they said that they would be equal. 
down here in the answers I've actually got the same amount so that one's true as well that one I think is quite straightforward I think three here was the worst of all of those questions okay question three in question three this is the OCW question so you're going to have two marks for this section A for your communication, um, organisation and written work. So I need to make sure that I put units on my answer. I've got to make sure that I actually label any of my calculations and if possible, if I want to be thorough, I'll include the formula as I'm working them out. Uh, it says the two cu cuboids shown have equal volumes. So although they look different, the answer for the volume of this one would be exactly the same as the volume of that one. So we're looking at volume and volume of a cuboid equals the length times the width times the height. So for cuboid A, where I have all three numbers, I can say that the volume equals 6 times 2 times 3. So that gives me 36 centimetres cubed. Please note, I'm putting my units, centimetre cubed, so this also means that the cuboid B, which I can write the calculation down as being 2 times 2 times H, is also equal to 36, because we were told that they're the same. Uh, it said there in the question, equal volumes. <coughs> <coughs> so I'm going to write by here, equal volumes. If you look at that second calculation, um, I know that this part of the calculation, 2 by 2, is going to be with 4. So I'm going to write underneath here now, 4 times h equals 36 centimeters cubed h equals 36 divided by 4 equals 9 centimeters because that shows every step of how I went from having the basic calculation here to having the actual height of the shape over here I've labeled my answer with h I've made sure my answer has the centimeters on the end and every calculation there that has a volume has a cm cubed on the end. I've labelled all my thinking and I've included my formula. So I think that I would get both of those OCW marks. Part B of the question. It's only a one mark question, but unfortunately quite a lot of people get these little questions wrong. Uh, it's based on a fact. It asks you about how many centimetre cubes are there in 2.5 litres, nothing to do with part A, uh, but all to do with some metric conversions. So first thing that you need to know, there's 1,000 millilitres in one litre, but also there's 1,000 centimetre cubes in one litre. If you had a little Lego cube that is one centimetre by one centimetre by one centimetre, you could fill it with water and it would hold one milliliter of water. So you'd need a thousand of those little centimetre cubes to make up a litre. One cc, one cubic centimetre, is the same as one milliliter. So if I have 2.5 litres, I have 2,500 millilitres which is the same then, it's 2,500 centimetres cubed. 
these types of facts you need to learn because they're quite popular and that one mark can make all the difference. Question four. Uh, the riddle questions are not really popular. People leave them blank or guess. But what I have to point out is that there are three bullet points here and this is a three mark question. So even if dealing with all of those bullet points seems a little bit complicated and you couldn't come up with one answer that would work for all three, if you give an answer that works for just one of them or just two of them, you will get some of those marks. So don't walk away. Do something even if you don't think you've got the entire answer correct. Right, so dealing with bullet point number one, a fraction that's a multiple of 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is the same as 2 tenths or 1 fifth. So I'm going to go with the 1 fifth. Multiples of 1 fifth would be the 1 fifth times table. So 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, 4 fifths, or 5 fifths. So I've just dealt with bullet point one. If I pick one of those now and write it on that answer line, the answer that I put there would get me one mark just from being part of bullet point one. But let's look at bullet point two. The fraction is greater than a half. Well, a half of fifths, if you like, a half of fifths would be two and a half of them. So anything from here onwards is greater than that half, greater than being over halfway. So if I actually write down any of these three, I've got two marks, not just one. Okay, so let's deal with our third one. The fraction is less than 75%. 75%, actually these are easier, can be even easier to deal with if you think of them still as decimals. So if I put in my 0 0.2, my 0 0.4, my 0 0.6, my 0 0.8 and my 1, you can now easily see that this is the point where the greater than a half kicks in, but you can also see that this is the point where the 0.75 or three quarters would kick in. So if I want it to be less than 75% and greater than a half and a multiple of 0 0.2, this is the only thing that is going to work. So my answer, either 0 0.6 or 6 tenths, Sorry, got a cough. Uh, I'm going to write down three fifths. Question five. Part A of question five doesn't ask for the nth term, which is quite popular in these questions. It just asks you to do the next two numbers. So your answers can go on these spaces here, and the line underneath is just for your workings out. I can see that this is going to be dropping by 1, dropping by 3, dropping by 5, so I predict this will drop by 7, and this will drop by 9. Expand means multiply, so I need to multiply everything inside this bracket by 5, 5 lots of 3x, and then 5 lots of minus 2. And that's it, nothing more. And then part C, this is a solve question. So I've got three steps. And if you've been in my maths class, I always do these the same way. Step one, take away the smallest number of x's. On this left-hand side, to talk about it, on this left-hand side, this, We'll take away 4x's, will give us 5x. 
and on this right hand side this will cancel be eliminated and I'll have just the five left. Step two this 5x plus 3 needs to have 3 subtracted from it so that we can have just our one term. So 5x remains untouched, but that plus 3 will be left, will be cancelled or eliminated completely, and this side will have to drop by 3. So now it's down to 2. And for my last step, this 5 here is a multiplier, so my inverse or my opposite is to divide by 5 instead of multiplying by 5, and x will equal to divided by 5. These three steps are quite predictable, so have a go, have a look at some other questions, because this is an easy 3 mark question that you can predict the method for solving whatever the exam. Question six, Sarah is in charge of a game at her school's Christmas party. Two fair spinners are spun as uh, shown in the example. So in this example, the spinner has landed on a two and on a one. And as shown above, this makes 21 because we're going to have two tens. This one gets multiplied by 10 and then we're going to add one. So then we just add this one on. So times our first one by 10 and add the second one on. It says this clearly underneath, but you have to read through the information or it looks more complicated than it is. <coughs> Part A says how many different numbers can be made playing this game. So if I play this game, I've got to think about all the combinations I can get from spinning those two spinners. So I could end up with a 1, 2 or 3 on the first spinner. And then if I spin the second spinner straight after it, that could also give me a 1, 2 or 3. So I could end up with a 1 on both, but that's going to give me a 10 plus 1 which is 11, a 1 and a 2, 10 plus 1, which would be 12, or a 1 and a 3, 10 plus 1, which is 13. Either way I think about it, I can see that I'm actually going to have nine different answers. So how many different numbers can be made to play in this game? The answer will be nine, and I'm just going to finish filling this in. So a 2 and a 1, 3 and a 1, 2 and a 2, 3 and a 2, 2 and a 3, 3 and 3. And if I'd done it the other way, I'd now have a 20 plus 1, 20 plus 2, 20 plus 3, 30 plus 1, 30 plus 2, 30 plus 3. And whichever way I thought about the question, I can see that I've got nine possible answers. Part B says write down all the prime numbers that can be made playing this game. Prime numbers don't have any factors except for themselves and one. So when I think about the different answers that are available, I'm going to write them in a long list and cancel out the ones that can't be prime. So when I think about the numbers that are available, as soon as I think about a number being in a times table, like 12 here is in my 2s, my 4s, my 6 times table, I've got to cancel it out because it's no good. Definitely not prime. 21, 7s and 3s make 21, so that's not prime. Anything even, 2 11s make 22, 2 16s, 4 8s make 32. And the numbers that I'm left with, be careful, because not all odd numbers are prime numbers. If you can think of your 11 times table, 3 11s are 33, and your 7 times table, you're probably going to be able to work out 
which prime numbers are left. And my prime numbers are 11, 13, 23 and 31. Part C says what's the probability of a person picking a prime number when they play the game? Well, I now know from part A that there were nine different numbers available and from part B that four of them were prime. So the probability of the person picking a prime number would be four out of nine. And then on part D over here, it tells me that Sarah charges each person one pound to play and each player who makes a prime number will get two pound for a prize. How much profit would the school expect if 180 people play the game? Okay, so you have earnings or take-ins, however you want to call them. The money that the customers are going to hand in. And there's 180 of them and they're going to give you a pound each. So £180 has come into the till or into the pot. How many winners will we have? Well, we said in part C that four ninths of the people who play this game are going to be winners. Four ninths of 180 people playing this game are expected to win. So to work this out, we are going to need to do 180 divided by 9 and then that add by 4. So that's 20 multiplied by 4, which is 80. So we expect there to be 80 winners. And every one of those winners will have a payout of £2. So the game pays out. 80 people, £2 each. So £160 goes back out of the tail or out of the pot as winnings. Profit will be what's left over when everybody's paid. 180 in, 160 out. So profit is £20. That's a four mark question. You'd be able to get quite a lot of marks for that, even if this fraction here hadn't been the right number. So if you're looking, thinking, well, I thought the fraction was 5 out of 9, but you did all the steps right. You just changed this number to a 5, because that's what you thought it was. You'd still get quite a lot of marks, if not all of them. So don't be put off if your answers are the wrong answers. It's the method that you're looking for as well.